Hashem. Thank you so much. Ein oid milvadoi, there's nothing but you, Hashem. And he's going to bring a famous analogy of this. An analogy to understand that even though I live in a world which seems to have multiplicity, I just met Mayor, so nice to meet you. And there's so many other wonderful Heiliger people here. It seems that we're all different and there's a bunch of stuff here. So how could it be that all is one? So this is one of the strongest analogies to understand how God's unity and the reality that we live in, it's all one. It's just from the perspective of the creation, it seems like there's multiplicity. But really, if you were to be a deeper human being, you would see and be able to trace all existence back to the oneness. Okay, and we're going to use an analogy of something that you're very familiar with. Like, very familiar with. Says the Rebbe, Let's give an analogy. Hu or Hashemish is the light of the sun. Hameir, oh, first line there. Hameir la'aretz veladarim, the light of the sun that shines down. The sun is called the m'or, the cause of or, that's mayor, that's shining. Shuziv the or, the light, the or that's coming off the m'or, the sun, that's shining. Umispashet migufa shemesh, and the light is expanding, ex extending, extending off. The face of the sun. Venira la'ain kol meir ala aritz, and you see it down here, right? You see the light streaming nicely, Daniel, through the window. Very pleasant. Oftentimes you find a little kitty cat nestled up on a little spot, right, where the light is coming in. Uba chalal ha'olam, into the earth's atmosphere. And says the Rebbe, Let's just think about this. The light that's coming off the sun is the light that's coming off the sun that comes all the way down here on that journey from the face of the sun down to this world through the Earth's atmosphere, down to this world to come down and kiss that little tulip that it should open up and blossom, that light that's down here, is that light also on the face of the sun? Yeah, uncle is giving a resounding yes. What do you guys say? It sure doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it? No, it looks like they're different lights. Seemingly. One's a light on the petal, and one's a light on the sun. They're in different places, they look different, they appear different, they're doing different things. But the light on the petal, if it shines down here on the petal, certainly it should shine from where it comes from. The source of where that light is coming from, it must be there also, right? It has the power to come all the way down here. It's here. If it's here, it's certainly up there, where it comes from. It's up there. The only thing is, you don't see the light on the face of the sun. You'd be hard-pressed, Mayor, to go and find that ray of light if you could take some SpaceX rocket ship sun-protected mission capsule all the way up there, and you were to go and trace that ray back to its source, you'd have a hard time at a certain point finding that ray of light on the surface of the sun. Why? Because in the makor, in the surface, in the source from where it comes from, it's so gobbled up in the power of the m'or, of the cause of the light. So the cause of the light is the sun. That's the cause. And the effect is the ray. Cause and effect. So far, so good. We see the rays. The ray is definitely, we see it shining down here, the ray is definitely shining up there. And it's connected. But I could think that this ray is an 
individual item. If I see a ray of light coming through the pane of glass, I could think that this ray of light is an in, has independent existence. And I call my friend up, you got rays of light going on? Coming, coming through your, the panes of your glass? Yeah, oh yeah. They're looking real nice. You too? Yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful rays of light. Independent. Independent existence. And then you have this real like intelligent yeshiva guy come along and say, you don't understand. They only look like they're independent. But if you trace them back to their source, is there any in intrinsic, intrinsic independence to that light? Or is it intimately, necessarily connected to the cause, the sun? Okay? In other words, it's obvious that the rays of light are have a necessary connection to the sun from where they come from. But from a distance, as the sun, as the light rays shine through the atmosphere, and they come far away from the sun, they take on an independent existence. They seem to be separate entities. So he says the very thing that we said. If the light will shine all the way down here, very distant from the Ma'or, the place that it comes from, certainly it's giving light up there on the face of the sun. If it shines down here so far from the source, certainly at the source, it's shining. Mamish. Rak shasham bim koya. Rak, however, sham bim koymoi. In its place, nechshav aziv hazel la'ayin ve'efes mamish. However, that ray of light that's shining all the way down here, remember the tulip, kissing the tulip, that ray of light certainly is shining on the face of the sun, but in that place, compared to where the ray of light is on the face of the sun, does the ray of light have any independent identity? Could you find the ray of light if you took that SpaceX capsule up there that we discussed? You'd be very hard pressed to find it. In other words, when something is in its source, this is a very deep thing right now. We're, bringing, we're now pulling out the principle of the analogy. We're moving from the analogy into the principle that the analogy is trying to tell, teach us, the nimshal. When something is in its source, it has no independent existence. Only when it, so to speak, emerges from its source does it start to take on independent existence. Or if you put this in logical terms, like Rav Chaim Miller said beautifully, an effect has no identity while it's still in its cause. An effect has no identity while it's still in its cause. Do you see the oak tree in the seed? The acorn? If you're a wise man, you will. But it's, it's there in potential. It's, it's still, though, in the cause. The effect has not yet unfolded. Therefore, it doesn't seem to have any identity as we know it. Or in other words, the ray of light, while still on the sun, has no identity while it's still in its cause before the effect, before the ray has emerged from the cause to shine down here and then takes on an identity. So far, so good. This is the stuff they were talking about in Sfat with the Arizal. This stuff. So you just, you gotta like, let this sink in. So the ray of light, while it's still in its cause, on the face of the sun, has no identity. So, yeah. does that mean that when you look at the sun, you don't see <coughs> the ray? You just see the sun? Is that what, this is kind of what it's saying in a way? When you look at the sun, or let's say better, if we were to travel to the sun, you wouldn't see the ray of light. 
the ray of light would have no identity. It's only because it's still in the cause. It's like the oak tree inside the acorn. It's, it's in the cause still. Only once the effect, the cause and effect, the effect starts happening, the ray is emerging from the sun's surface, does it now take on identity. So it's like and the further away it gets, I'm using that further because we're going to take this into, from the analogy into the reality of this, the further away it gets, the more that it appears to have independent identity. Even though it's there in the cause, but it's in a very concealed way. In a very deep way, this is one of the ideas of a seed and a child, that inside of the seed is the information of the child, but it's all there in potential, and only through the process of, so to speak, the unwinding of the seed, does it now come into the effect, the cause and effect? What I'm describing now is the process called tzimtzum, just so you know, is the process of something becoming more actualized in coarse reality. So while the ray is on the face of the sun, it doesn't have any independent identity, but it's there. Only when it gets far away, when it emerges from the face of the sun, does it start to take on, take on more independence. Only as the child, after it's conceived, begins to literally take on form, does it have identity. Inside the seed, you don't see the child. Only as it becomes, the, the, the helix is unfolding and unwinding, which is the process called Bina, and that's what a mother does, is, is literally unwinding this. That's the process of bringing something that was wrapped up in the cause and pulling out the effect. But when it's still in the cause, you don't see the thing itself. So back to the sun, while the rays of light are still on the face of the sun, you don't see the rays of light even though you know they're there, because we just said logically, if they shine down here, then certainly they should be shining up there. Okay, look what the Rebbe says. Shehu makor ha'or, the sun is the source of the light. Ve'haziv hazeh, shehaziv ve'ha'or hazeh, e'en orak ha'ara, me'ira me'guf ve'etzim kadur ha'shemesh, Rak bechalal ha oilam tachas kol ha shamayim ve al ha aritz. She ain kan guf kadur ha shemesh. You only see the ray of the light because it's moving away from the ball of the sun. But if you're hanging out on the ball of the sun, I'm saying conceptually, you, you, you bring your mind to the sun's surface, you don't see any rays of light up there. It's only as the ray is moving away from the ball of the sun does it take on identity. Kadur Hashem, Metzius. Nira kan ha'or ve'haziv hazeh le'yesh mamish. Only when the light comes down here through the earth's atmosphere do you start to see identity. Le'ein kol ve'noifel alav kan. And then, this is important, when the ray of light comes from the surface of the sun down here, remember back to the kitty cat nestled on the in the sun and the tulip being kissed by the light. Only there do we now have the light becomes yesh. It's a somebody. You know, it's a ray of light. Ray, how you doing? Ray, he's a somebody. Look at me. I'm, I'm giving a life to this tulip. Look at me. I'm making this kitty cat happy. He's like a somebody that even when you see it coming to the, and right, the dust particles, and you say, like, ah, it's so pretty. You know, rays like, ah, ray. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It seems that he has independence. But this, you know, good looking ray, if you were to trace him back to the source from where he comes from, all of a sudden his independence becomes very, very. feeble. His independence becomes very, very questionable. And questionable is good. 
you thought you were such a somebody, a big yesh, a something firm, you know, shtenders, yeah, schnitzel, gains, like this is like something strong independence. Almost like, like shoddy. Yeah. Like it's not as, and you just say fest. It's like, it's there. Hashem is fest. Hashem is solid. It's like less fest. It's all of a sudden a bit, you know, the independent existence of it is all of a sudden becoming like... More stilted, apparently. That's right. As I'm, as I'm trace, and the closer back I get, which is called the reverse of tzimtzum, as I'm untzimtzuming, which is really what davening is and learning Kabbalah is, is going up, fighting tzimtzum, like reverse tzimtzuming, back up to source, okay, is the process of being the ray of light, okay, now we're moving into the, 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 the reality, were the rays of light. And to the degree that you're living, so to speak, far from the sun, you feel like, yeah, independence. But to the degree that you start tracing your identity back to where it comes from, all of a sudden, you're going, you're, going, you're reverse symptoming, you're going back to the source from where you come from that you're never cut off from, all of a sudden you realize that you're not as fest independent as you thought, you're actually very dependent on the ma'or, on the source of the light. Hashem is the source of the light. And therefore this world and saying Shema is essentially about going on the journey. You could tell Elon about this. Going on the journey, see if he's into this, if he can come to Yeshiva, we'll talk about it with him, to conceptually take the ray and trace it back to the sun's surface. And you can imagine the closer you get, the more you start feeling like I'm not as independent, I'm totally one with where I come from. But like we mentioned, if the ray shines down here, it does shine up there. You do exist up there. But just in comparison, to the fact that you're on the sun's surface, you don't have that, you know, independence. You realize once you're on the surface of the sun that you are one with the mo'or. It's, it's, it's warm up there. It's, it's, it means we have varmeyid. Alebedeka varmeyid. And so Chassidim, who, who, who learn a lot of this, is that we're tracing the ray back to the makor going all the way back. And that's the idea. And the Baal Tanya is going to end this chapter. There's a few more things. Let's just see a few more lines. Kan sham yesh be'emes. Ma she'en ken, kishu b'mekoyroi b'gufa shemesh, e'en noifel lav shem yesh klal. When the ray of light is still on the surface of the sun, it has no independent identity, even though it exists. Rak I in the Ephes. Ki be'emes hu sham. It is there. La ayin ve'ephes mamish. She'ein meir sham. Rak mekoiroi levadoi. Shu gufa shemesh. On the surface of the sun, it's shining. But you don't see it there, because it's on... The, the, the face of the sun. Hamer, the Ephes Biladoi. And without the sun, the ray of light is nothing. The Kedvar Ma'ela Mamish. And now he brings it down to earth for us. Bidemusim Kitsalmam. So too it is with us. Heim Kolabru Im Legabe Shefa Eloki. This is the way all existence is being sustained. Every part of existence is like rays of light. And therefore, they only look like independent because they're, so to speak, far conceptually from their source. That's tzimtzum. Hashem is concealing. But if you were to trace back where this comes from, everything is Hashem. This is part of the illusion of this world, is that it's the illusion of separateness. 
And Shema, which is the real world, is tracing yourself back to the source. Hashem made this world of apparent separateness that you could choose oneness and become the master of your choice, which makes you like Hashem, which is part of the great secret of how this all works. Yes? So yeah. So the answer is, there was a famous question, this question was asked, uh, there was a machloikis, it was funny, Rabbi Lawrence Kellerman told me one time that he had a machloikis with Rebetzin Heller, who's now Rebetzin Gottlieb. And she's one of the greatest uh, female Kabbalists in the world. The Rashiva holds of her as a very, very high person. Uh, he said that she learned all of Kisve Maral while she was nursing her kids. Like Maral is like mamish, deep, deep stuff. Mm -hmm. And they had a famous machloikis, which is, it, it's described in Eastern uh, philosophies as that leaving this world is like a drop of water going back into the ocean. And Rav, and, uh, Rav Kellerman said that when we leave this world, we have independent existence. And Rebetzin, Keller, and, and Rebetzin uh, uh, Gottlieb Said, said, she brought a Zoyar that said it's like water going back into the, the Zoyar says it. So they sent it to one of the greatest Chabad uh, leaders of the generation, who was a Bucky and Tanya. And they said, who's right? Is it Rebbe Heller? Is it like the drop of water, like the Zoyar? Or, like many places in the Gemara says that you, you have very clear independent existence up there. You have a body. So, you know what the answer was? Oh. Two words. You're right. <laughs> so the answer is yes, we go back into the ocean, but you're aware of it. So you're just aware that you're a meaningless with no identity? No. To the degree that you created a vessel to experience God's oneness, you're now able to fully experience it. And this is what the Arizal says is the three meanings, when we say Yudke Vavke, we don't say the name, but we think Haya Hoivivie was, is, and forever will be. The Arizal says this is three stages in creation. Haya, Hashem was, before creation. It was only Hashem. Haya, now. Hashem with creation. In our subject, as creation is like rays of the sun that are expanding forth in a world where it appears that we're separate and you now have free will. Free will to rejoin your source and to become somebody who is now aware of that. Because instead of running away from source, running into the multiplicity, you trace your way back and you create identity through that. That's the 613 mitzvahs. Yeah. That's the world to come, where we're going to go back into the oneness of Hashem. The ray of light is going to go back to the face of the sun. But now, you, to the degree that you worked on that while you were here, you're going to be aware of it. But a person who just spent this whole time, I don't know, playing video games and you know, drinking you know, malt whiskey for no other reason than why not just drink, then it's going to be a problem. I'm making a comment on people who are alcoholics. We want to help them. And they should be you know, given as much assistance as possible to heal them, heal that, that horrible illness. Hashem gave us free will. And that's, going to be, that's what's activating now, at this phase in the journey. But once Mashiach comes, which is happening before our very eyes right now, this is what's called, going to usher in the days of Yom She'em Behem Chefetz, days where there's going to be no more free will starting to lose free will because as we get close to the end and the, the rays naturally start making their way back to the sun so then it's like obvious it's going to be obvious when LeBron James calls you up Mary, and he's like you've got to teach me some of this Tanya like, this, is, this is some good stuff so it's going to be obvious everyone's going to be jumping on the bandwagon so now's the time to exercise the free will we're going to finish this piece tomorrow Mitzvah Shem, and then move on to the fourth parak. And this is only the introduction to Shariyuch Vemunah. It's going to get 
much deeper. But now, for the next day, just speak about this analogy with each other. Work on this analogy of we are the rays of light. And to the degree that we are far from the sun, we feel multiplicity. We feel like we have our own independent existence. But to the degree that we just think about it a little bit, we realize that we are intimately connected to source. We have no identity without the source. And really, we are absolutely in need of source and being vitalized every second by source. And being far away gives, grants you the opportunity to choose that. And that's what's called revealing the light within the darkness. We should be zayat to Mishid Sidkenim Amen. Amen. Amen.